Hey, this is Greg Hawks. Welcome to another Source in Real Life. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Indeed and kind of from the recruiter's perspective as well as from the candidate perspective, what we what we typically look for and, and ways, especially if you're a, a job seeker and you're you're trying to target the right companies, you're trying to get your, your resume out there. There's a couple things that you can do and, and hopefully by seeing both worlds, you can kind of see how this all fits and and how you can set yourself up for success so let me actually do a search for um i just i i'm going to do something in regards to uh, a, a fire suppression because i want to show everybody uh the power of acronyms the power of acronyms and things like that let me just go houston texas and so nice it is a type of fire suppression certification that uh, you have to have in order to do anything in, in regards to, uh, well, obviously suppressing fires and, and, and things like that. But it, this is a one keyword search for job and you can literally find a whole slew of very targeted type of, of roles around that, around, uh, you know, like sprinkler design, fire sprinkler fitter. Um, you know, there's probably gonna be some suppression engineers and things like that in here. Uh, that I, I saw look, that's misspelled they need to change that <laughs> so but um, it's always interesting what you can find on the internet uh, indeed is, is a great source for for job seekers because this is where a lot of recruiters live we live on LinkedIn a lot we link we live on indeed uh, I know I do more deep dives and if different social medias um, but this is this is a good starting point if you're starting your job search. A lot of people will ask me, well, where'd I start? I, I haven't looked for a job in 10 years. Um, start with LinkedIn, start with uh, with Indeed and, and the standard job boards. Uh, because, I mean, even Google has a, has a Google Jobs function now. And you can see I'm looking at these jobs I'm not even signed in. So you can sign up, make a profile, and I'll get to that in a minute. And I'll, I'll show you why that's important. You can search by job type, by company, experience level, uh, all this stuff. Left. So, like, if I'm looking for a senior level person, or a senior level job, it's right here. Okay, you just click in, apply, get a job description, all that stuff. Uh, always try to apply on company websites if you can, uh, or if you're like me, you can find and target people within the organization on LinkedIn and other places, and say, "Hey, I applied to this job. Uh, this is my experience. Uh, I'd like to talk more and, and that sort of thing." So, I've, I've done that a little bit with. Uh, tools like hire tool and, and things like that in the past so but yeah most people know this most people who who have uh, been in the job search know about indeed uh, let me show you on the employer side and again i'm not logged in yeah i don't need to log i, I just want to find resumes <clears throat> so i'm not logged in because i i don't want everybody's name to show up when i do a search here but if i'm say i'm a recruiter and i'm looking for like a Java engineer. Let me use my the right keyboard because I have multiple keyboards here. I'm looking for a Java engineer. I can search by job title. I can search by skills. Say I'm looking for, you know, I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, let's let's again look in Houston. Actually, let's look in Buffalo because I am looking in Buffalo right now. And it thinks, and it thinks. So what comes up? Now, if I have an Indeed license, I'm gonna see people's names and I'll be able to reach out to them. Since I'm not logged in, I can't really do that. But this is from the recruiter's perspective. This this is what we see when uh, when we look you up. And honestly, when when uh, you do have a license, I can hover over your name and it'll it'll pop your resume up. So if you are a job seeker, you definitely wanna fill in as much as you can on your resume because this little preview bar that pops up and you might have seen it in some of my other videos, uh, it really tells me everything about you, about uh, your, your background, your experience. If you have a summary of skills, definitely add a summary of skills and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but this is a simple search. I'm able to see a lot of different engineers. Uh, I can just see uh, by this, this brief preview here, there's several people that I wanna talk to course I don't see their names but uh, like I said when you have an indeed license it gives you a little bit more power uh, recruiters can search by the the last time you updated by the distance so for instance like I live in in Kingwood which is north of Houston 
when I was looking for a job, I would list my location as Houston just to give me a wider scope as far as as people looking for me as well as jobs that I'm looking for. That would be because I was I was open to commute quite a bit at that time. So you get searched by skill level, and this is from the recruiter side too. So keep that in mind. Search by skill level, uh, what degree type you have. So again. Fill out as much information as you can. I know there's like a, a one page resume myth going on out there still. Um, don't believe it because I can literally scroll through profiles in a couple of seconds. I can scroll through a four page resume, which I have a four page, page resume in a couple of seconds because of technology. It's, it's much faster to get through people than it used to be. But I mean, this is this this is where you need to add your skills because like I can literally search by skills. So I'm in tech right now. So I'm looking for somebody with Java. Everybody's looking for Java Spring Boot. I'm gonna do something else. So, so say I'm looking for Redshift. Let's see what happens when I put in Redshift. I probably won't get anybody and I probably need to go national because it's a niche skill. And it's thinking, it's thinking. And let me do, let me do an engineer and see what it pulls. So I'm searching by skills. You can search by companies if you have a specific company that you want to look for. Like, uh, for instance, I know, so let me let me stick on skills right now. I don't want to do engineer. I want to do engineering for skills. Okay, so data warehouse, yep, that's data warehouse person. That's probably somebody I want to talk to. Software data engineer is somebody I want to talk to for Redshift. I'm not looking for Redshift right now, but I've looked for Redshift in the past. And I apologize if I'm talking fast. I had my coffee today, so I'm really hyper. Um, so yeah, so another thing you can do, and this is both on the job seeker side and the recruiter side, is you can do what's called Boolean, and some people know about Boolean, but it's using and or or statements. And I'll show you how this ties into, I can spell Redshift. They use a similar search on, on the job seeker side in a minute and show you because this will help this will help get you more results so say i'm looking let me just look for texas no texas not tejas okay again i'm looking for resumes at this point so look at this um lots of people i have developer and engineer okay so that broadens the scope of people that I'm looking for because I've looked, I'm, what this is telling me is look for AWS or Redshift, look for an engineer or developer. So it kind of broadens my horizon a little bit because or statements say it's either or if you use an and statement or a space, then it says look for this and this. So I use this little trick. Um, and let me let me show you on the, on the job seeker side too, okay? And show you how I used to use this as well. I know. I mean, I know these are simple tips. These might seem simple, but it's it's really what I use on a daily basis to find people, and it's it's incredibly effective. So if I'm looking for a developer or an engineer position, and say I'm looking for a React JS, okay. <clears throat> let's let's look in look in Houston again. Sorry, I have to say. So again, React developer, React developer, front end engineer, right? So you're not just looking for a specific job title, senior.net developer, this probably has React, look, it has React in it. So this helps broaden your horizon a little bit if you're if you're honed in on looking for a, a specific type of position. So um, for instance, like if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a CPA, I'm looking for a CPA position, something that requires that. And you're looking for both of those. You'll have one of 53 jobs. Let me see if I put in or what happens. Look, you've got over 900 jobs, all right? So 
you can see the difference there. Uh, you can also, let's, let's do specific. I'm looking for, and you can also add a space, CPA and CISA. Let's look within 50 miles, okay? And it, it adds the scope up a little bit. Find jobs, let's find jobs. No, I don't want to do or, I want to do and. I want to do both. Find jobs, go find jobs. Okay, again, one and 53, uh, 56 jobs. 56 jobs is gonna be a whole lot easier to go through if you're a CISO auditor than 900 something. There you go, that's some tips as far as, as, as looking for a position. Again, you need to add as much information as you can, as many skills as you can, because like I said, I'll go and I will look based on skills, based on job title, based on location. Those are all things you need to keep in mind when you're looking for a job, when you're putting your information out there, because there's several ways to search. Uh, experience level, I've talked to people with like 20 years of experience and they only put 10 years of experience on on their resume. And I'm like, what? what why why didn't you put your your whole tenure on your experience because now i know that you're more than a senior level engineer or a senior level person you're in, in the principal realm because of all the other work that you've done and a lot of people do that because some organizations don't look at people with over 10 years of experience but i do i think that's great and, and anything that can help add to your story especially if i know that you've been in in this world for for more than 15 years you just from a technology perspective or from from any industry type of perspective you've probably seen so much more than other people have seen as far as technology goes as far as different uh, different initiatives different things happening in an organization i mean it's it you know there's a lot of different changes and adaptations that one has to do especially if you've been in a company for a long number of years uh, and i understand that so uh, as a recruiter i try to read between the lines and you know it's something as simple as if you're working through school if you put your, yourself through school that's part of your story you need to add that you need to add those experience uh, uh, timelines into your resume because that's going to tell me the full story of who you are and what you do uh, again i talked to somebody uh, the, the, and i talked to two people with with patents in the, the last couple of days and i always ask people about patents because that's pure innovative thought so if you work on something like that, if you have published something uh, in an academic article, if you blog, if you vlog, if you if you um, do anything um, for your community outside of your community, whether it's volunteering or whether it's like an open source type of project, I mean that's all part of your story and all who you, all part of who you are, and really that tells me what kind of person you are, what kind of things you do. If you're if you're in technology and you're a coder and you have personal projects that you go work on at home at, after you have shut down your computer for your full-time job. I mean, that tells me that you're you're a constant learner. So it's all things like that. So skills, projects, uh, anything that will help you tell your story, um, put it in your resume. And, and I can't, I can't uh, reiterate this enough, uh, in your in indie profile, make sure that you have your full resume information in there. Um, you know make sure that especially if you're looking for a job that your information is current your your linkedin uh, profile is up to date your indeed profile is up to date wherever else your resume is out there if you have it out on a public website that's up to date as well you have all your projects that you're working on uh, and any any new information any new experience that you have make sure it's reflected in your resume and uh, I, I wish I'd, I'd, maybe at another time I could show you um, uh, some examples of, of summaries, but I mean, think about, think about your, your, you know, five biggest strengths and put it at, at the top of your resume in a summary. Or if you have very niche skills, specific skills, especially in, in the technology biz, um, you know, make sure that you have your tech stack listed. So those are all things that you can do to set yourself up for success. and and have people like me view your profile, find you out there on the internet um, and, and reach out to you and connect with you and, and see if we can help you find a job. So um, hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ping me or, or, or send a comment in the comment section below. Um, please share and subscribe and help spread the word. 
Uh, you know, we're in the business of helping people, so let's help as many people as we possibly can. Thanks for watching.